Where is the best place to find a husband? I'll go first. Instagram, and you wanna know why? I don't know about you, but I believe the boy needs to put in the work. Like, boy, chase me, come after me. Like, I'm not trying to play games, but Cinderella did not chase after the prince, uh-uh. Dear -uh. God in heaven, gentlemen, stop. What is it like to be so wrong? Maybe I'm wrong on this one, but if we're being technical, the prince didn't have to do much. The dude's a prince. He's rich, handsome, and is literally inheriting. Cinderella, on the other hand, had to bribe her fairy godmother into scoring her a pumpkin carriage, a fancy dress, and those poorly designed crystals shoes which just look like a breeding ground for all kinds of fungus. Cinderella did this so she would be noticed by the prince. If Cinderella showed up to the ball in her peasant garbs, the prince would have had her arrested on sight for trespassing on royal grounds while being a commoner. And I'm pretty sure I've never seen Cinderella, so it's pretty sad that I know this and you don't. You see, when a dude hits you up on Instagram, he has no idea where you live unless you have it listed in your bio. Chances are, if you don't already know each other, you don't live in the same city. Well, he's gonna have to buy a plane ticket or drive across the country to come meet you. And that's exactly the kind of effort we want and deserve. <laughs> So I have a question. Why do you deserve that? Why do you think it's acceptable behavior to just demand that a man waste his time, energy, and money to travel across the country to meet you when you've made it abundantly clear that you're not willing to put in any effort on your end? Remember, this is your master plan to find a husband, and you've already shown this man that you're entitled, stuck up, and have way too high of an opinion of yourself. You're not off to a good start. You haven't shown anything that could even be remotely considered wife material, and regardless of how much you prayed to your fairy godmother to make it otherwise, simply existing and smearing makeup all over your face doesn't count as putting in effort. So let me tell you, when this guy Jake commented on my Instagram, I added him on Facebook. I didn't want him sliding into my DMs, I wanted him sliding into my Facebook Messenger. We sent lengthy messages back and forth for about two months. He invited me to come up to Northern California and hang out with his family, which is about 10 hours away. I said, no, but I'll be in Maui on my family vacation if you want to come. That boy bought a plane ticket to Maui! I didn't even tell him what time we were flying in! Congratulations! Oh, you sweet summer child, that's not a husband, that's a simp. A self-respecting man wouldn't just randomly book a flight to Maui to meet a woman he's been talking to online for two months. In fact, if you were to tell this man that you weren't willing to travel up to see him, he would lose interest because you made it abundantly clear that you weren't that serious in the first place. You're not gonna find a husband on Instagram, or anywhere in your case. You post your dirty laundry for the planet to witness, and you think this makes you desirable. It's the opposite. Men want want women who are going to respect them and their privacy. They don't want the kind of woman that brags that she put the minimum amount of effort to convince a simp to buy a plane ticket to Maui. Yes, I'm certain that I read that somewhere once. When I got divorced at 32, I thought my life was over. No one was ever gonna wanna date me. Like I had this scarlet A and I was like branded for life. <laughs> yeah, I could literally not have been more wrong. And I just really wish that someone would have told me this because I literally wasted so much time having all these pity parties for myself. Like we're talking when I was ready to start dating again, I had a full blown roster, high quality men, successful, smart, handsome, funny, all the things. Ah, it's nothing to be proud of, Rusty. Oh boy, looks like nobody told her. Woman, those high quality, rich, and successful men don't really see you as the relationship type. They see you as, um, how do I put this delicately? Newly single and ready to mingle in the bedroom. You're out there having fun and living it up, so for men like Colonel Chadwick R. Chadley, they see an easy opportunity to go out and have some bedroom fun with zero commitment. Now you think having this roster is a flex, but it really isn't. It's actually kind of pathetic. It may seem like you're having fun now, but wait until you're 39. If you're lucky, that roster will have a couple of simps and a six-digit phone number to a closed donut shop in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and that is best case scenario. Like, literally, I was just joking with my friends that I, post-divorce, had more men, like, coming at me than I did when I was 24. Let's talk about why I think this is. When you come out of a divorce, you just have this new, profound strength and confidence. Like, kind of this f you, f you all attitude. I don't have time for bullshit. I don't have time for game. I've been through it. Do not f with me. And it is so wildly magnetic. Uh, 
I don't think any of that's true. No, that's not true at all. The reason why men want you post-divorce is because you're excited to get out there and have fun. You're excited to start your life after abusing the court system to fleece your ex-husband for all he was worth, and now you want to get out there and live your life of hedonistic bliss. The only problem is this plan will only work for a year, two at the absolute maximum. After a while, your attitude will make you profoundly unappealing, and those men will lose interest in you because your post-divorce lifespan is much like a freshly baked loaf of bread. Men will find it appealing for a minute, but it won't take long before it gets old, stale, and covered in mold. And when that happens, you'll get thrown out and replaced with a fresh loaf of bread straight from the divorce court bakery. Because after a divorce, you have to figure all of your shit out. You gotta pick up the pieces. I was so much more independent. I knew exactly who I was, exactly what I wanted, and what I expected out of a partner. So please stop worrying. Have some fun dating. I got good things coming. And how exactly is that working out for you, by the way? It's clear to me that you haven't picked up any pieces or figured anything out because you're too busy out there having fun. And like I said, none of those men on your roster see you as anything more than just a couple of rounds of bedroom fun. They have no interest in seeing you as a partner. That's because partners are for buddy cops and wingmen. Why should this successful, well-established, high-quality man settle for a divorced woman when he can have a younger, more attractive, and more agreeable? woman with less baggage instead. You need to face the facts, woman. Your fate is already sealed. We have seen your future, and it looks a little something like this. Confidently incorrect. Just amazing how confidently incorrect you are, because let me just show you this. So here's the evidence that proves it. So uh, unmarried, childless women are the happiest subgroup of population. This comes from Paul Dolan, professor of behavioral science at London School of Economics. This has been peer reviewed as well. His research is backed. Very good research. <laughs> and... <laughs> That doesn't look like a peer-reviewed study. That looks more like a magazine article. Personally, I think your point would actually have a little bit more weight if you actually read the study than pointed out how the data was collected. But you didn't do that, because if you did, you'd realize these studies are virtually meaningless when it comes to data collection. Especially if that data was collected by a biased grad student who had single childless women lie on their surveys. But then again, I could be wrong. After all, I'm not recording this cringe in a high school classroom like you. Then we also have this article from Psychology Today that is actually using the research from Harvard University in which it states that single women without children are often happier and healthier than men and married women with children. Women tend to have stronger social networks outside of their romantic relationships, and single women may be more selective than single men when choosing a partner as they may enjoy the freedom provided by their lifestyles. Really? Wasn't Harvard University caught in a massive scandal when it was found out that the president of Harvard actually plagiarized her doctoral thesis? I mean, I'm no middle school algebra teacher, but I would definitely question the validity of any studies coming out of a university was going through a scandal like that. Especially when that study was published in a journal like Psychology Today, which has already been proven time and time again to be less than reliable when it comes to printing actual facts. But there I go again, using logic to prove that your feelings are completely meaningless. <laughs> you know, I would apologize for doing that, but that would imply I have some guilt, and I really don't. So as you can see, that took me all of five minutes to Google, and there's tons more research out there showing that single women without kids are actually the happiest group out there. Um, on top of this, I think this is more of a reflection on you and your belief system, not actual science and research-backed evidence. So um, next time, try actually using research instead of your opinions. You you don't know what words mean, do you? I don't need a degree in any field of study to tell you that if you do a five minute search on TikTok, YouTube, or Instagram, you're gonna find hundreds of thousands of hours worth of single childless women over the age of 30 crying their eyes out and wondering why they can't find a man and how they screwed up their own lives. We don't need biased psychological studies to prove this. Trust me, sister, I, like many other men, do this for a living. We know what we're talking about. Out. And your five minutes worth of Google searching is a reflection on you to grasp at straws and deny basic reality to ignore an obvious truth that's right in front of you. And that truth is that you're not only wrong, you are wrong to an embarrassing degree.
And that is going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell, leave a comment or two, and let's give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for checking out this new video, and until next time, peace out, homies.